In this episode of Home Built Workshop, we're building a mold to make an acoustic guitar. Stick around. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. I hope this episode finds you all doing well. If you've seen my video I did a little while back where I showed the acoustic guitar project that I've been challenged to make by my buddy Thomas, well today it is time to get started on that project. We're going to start off and we're going to build a set of molds. Inside that awesome box of parts that Thomas sent me was a set of plans. These are going to be vital to this whole entire build. Now before I even hit record on this video, I took those plans to a local copy shop and I had a whole bunch of copies made. I did two different Different versions of the plans. I had to make some that were just regular copies and then I also had a few made that were mirror image. Because I planned to build this as a left-handed instrument I wanted to make sure I had a visual of an accurate picture of where all the bracing and things are going to go. I'm going to need to switch those around and rather than trying to do it in my head I figured I would have a mirror image made of the template. I'm not going to need the mirrored ones for most of this build, but there are a couple applications where I think it's going to be helpful. So I've got a whole stack of plans that I can chop up and use for templates. So I'm just going to pick one of them out of here and we're going to start slicing and dicing. I'm not sure how well you guys can see this or not, but hopefully you can tell that there's an outline of a guitar in here, as well as a million other dimensions and shapes and things. Right now, the only thing that I'm concerned with is the outside shape of the instrument. Basically, I need to create a mold that is the exact shape as the outside of the guitar. This is going to allow us to get the sides fit into the mold as we start gluing on and working on other operations. We need the mold to help retain the shape. So basically it's gonna be just a hollow cutout that's gonna be exactly equal to this shape. And the way we're going to do that is by slicing and dicing on this pattern. Then we're gonna glue it to some MDF where we can then cut it out, sand it to the shape that we need, then basically that will be our one master template. Then we'll make all the other pieces based off of that. Hopefully that makes sense. Now before I start slicing and dicing on this pattern and seeing if we can make a set of molds, I do want to give a couple shout outs to some friends of mine that have been super helpful in this project already before I've even started making any cuts. The first person is my buddy Matt over at Zimbleman Guitars. Matt's a friend of mine and also local to me and a awesome acoustic guitar builder. Matt was gracious enough with his time to allow me to come visit his shop, see some of his processes, some of his tools, techniques, as well as answer about a a million questions before I get started. So Matt, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And don't worry, I'll probably be hitting you up again sometime along this process. If you guys want to check out Matt's work, I'm going to put a link to his website down below in the description. The second person that I need to give a shout out to is Mr. Eric Schaefer of Eric Schaefer Guitars. Eric saw the video where I was introducing the project and kind of unboxing all the parts and he reached out to me and offered up his online course to me so that I could go through and kind of learn some of the process. If you guys haven't heard of Eric, he is an amazing acoustic instrument builder and also teaches online courses as well as in-person courses at his shop in Pennsylvania. He also has a ton of videos on his YouTube channel covering about every single thing you could possibly think of. It's also an amazing resource. If you're looking at starting a project like this, I definitely recommend checking out Eric, checking out his work, taking one of his courses, and I'm going to put links to his site as well down in the description. So huge thank you to Matt and Eric. You guys have been so helpful in getting the ball rolling for me that we're now ready to jump in and start making some cuts. Let's get this thing rolling. And let's cut something. Hopefully not my fingers. So there is a rough cutout of half of our instrument. When I cut this out, I made sure to stay to the inside of the line and then we'll sand exactly to the line here in just a minute. Since this first one is gonna be kind of used as the master, I found a scrap of what I think is about 3 8 acrylic. We're gonna use that to make our master template from. To make this master, I'm gonna line my cutout template with the edge of the acrylic and secure it with some tape. 
The tape is going to act like a hinge and keep the edge of my template lined up with the acrylic. Spray glue. We need spray glue. Hold please while I find spray glue. It's fine. Now I'll very carefully use my tape hinge to fold my template in place. And I'll use a J roller to make sure that it's pressed down nice and flat. I also want to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles in there because that's going to mean the paper is not laying where it's supposed to lay. Well that made a little bit of a sticky mess but now we can take this over to the bandsaw and cut just again on the inside of that line. Now it's over to the oscillating spindle sander, but before I fire it up, I'm going to use a machinist square to make sure that the table is absolutely square. And now I'll very carefully sand to the line on my template. With the inside shape of the mold determined, now I'm going to use a compass to trace a line that will represent the outside of the mold. This is not really super important. I've seen a ton of different shapes for the molds, but I kind of want mine to match the same contours as the inside. The last thing that I'll mark out will be a couple of tabs along the top and bottom edge. And then it's back to the bandsaw to cut out the outside shape. and I'll clean up those cuts on the spindle sander as well. Although this is not as critical as the inside dimension, I still want it to look nice. And finally, I'll drill a couple of holes at either end of this master template. This will be used for some dowels, which will help hold the MDF pieces all in the exact same alignment. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. You guys ever run into this problem? I don't know if this is because the acrylic has been in the shop a while. The backer doesn't want to come off, so I'm going to have to spend a few minutes getting this removed and all the gunk cleaned up. Gunk. That's the technical term. I'll see you guys back in just a minute with this cleaned up. Well, I've got all of the sticky crud off of there. It's probably hard to see since this thing's clear, but I ended up just using some mineral spirits and then some isopropyl alcohol to get all the residue off of there. Now we're ready to start transferring this over to some MDF and start cutting out the rough blanks that we can then flush trim on the router table and make a bunch of copies. Since these pieces of MDF that I'm using are way too big to try to cut on my bandsaw, I'm going to use a jigsaw to first break them down into more manageable sizes. apply some double-sided tape to the MDF and I can stick my template in place. Before taking this piece straight to the router table, I'm going to drill out the hole for the dowels. By driving some dowels through the template and into the MDF, this is going to pin everything in exact alignment. I don't have to rely on only the double-sided tape. The tape would probably work fine, but now I don't have anything to worry about as I'm routing this flush at the router table. And there's one. Now we gotta repeat that exact same process 
approximately five more times. I'm going to spare you the details on that, but uh, I'm going to be playing with the dust for a little while. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, here are my six copies of our templates. That took quite a while, ended up being quite a bit of work after a broken bandsaw blade, a trip to town to get a new bandsaw blade, and then quite a bit of time working in a room filled with dust. Don't worry, I did have a respirator on and the door open most of the time, but this was a dusty mess. I'm glad to be done with it. It's time to glue these things together. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna laminate three of these for each side. Since they're all made from the same master template, both sides are gonna be identical. And since these all have the same dowel holes drilled in here, once we get the glue on there, I'll align them and then drive in a dowel, and that should make sure everything is in perfect alignment as the glue dries. Now the fun part, I gotta get these lined up. Now I'm just gonna remove some of that squeeze out with a damp paper towel. We're gonna need to sand this later, so the more glue that I can get off there now, the better. Even though these parts are pinned in place with the dowel, I'm gonna apply quite a few clamps to help hold it together while the glue dries. And there's one, I'll just repeat that exact same process to glue up the other side, and then I'll just give it a couple of hours to dry. With the two halves out of the clamps, I'll use a flush trim saw to trim the dowels flush with the surface. To clean up the inside of the mold, I'm going to use some sandpaper wrapped around a spray can as kind of a makeshift sanding block. With our two pieces cleaned up, we now need to be able to attach them together so that it acts as one solid mold. We still need to have the ability to separate it in case some glue gets stuck in there or some other reason. So. I'm going to use a couple of these little latches. We'll just attach them on the ends. That way we'll be able to just latch them together and it'll act as one solid mold. With the pieces securely latched together, I'm going to drill a hole right down through the joint between the two halves. This is going to be for an alignment dowel. Now we'll open the mold up and we're going to glue in a piece of a dowel into one half of the mold. That way when we clamp it together, the other half of the dowel will register against the other half of the hole and that's going to keep everything always in alignment. I want to be really careful to only apply the glue to half the dowel. And to prevent any squeeze out from sticking to the rest of the mold, I'm going to use a piece of wax paper to separate it. While we wait for the glue on these dowels to dry, I'm going to begin working on some spreaders that will be used to help hold the sides of the instrument tight to the mold. They're going to just be some laminated pieces of MDF, very similar to the way this mold was built, but it's going to fit the inside contours and then will be able to be adjusted using some turnbuckles. I'm just kind of eyeballing the size and then I'm going to trace out the contour of the mold onto a piece of MDF.
Now I'm gonna use this piece as my template. I'm gonna make five more copies so that I have a total of six, and then I'll be able to glue these all together into one big block. There's one block. We'll sand these edges flush later. Now we have a block that is roughly the same shape as our mold. I guess while we're at it, let's unclamp this. Remove our wax paper, because this glue is dry as well. And now what we need to do is to make some fine tuning adjustments to our block to make sure that it's exactly the same shape as our mold. Right now it's close, but since it's only sanded to a pencil line, there is a chance that there's gonna be some irregularities in there. I've got a piece of 80 grit sticky back sandpaper. We're just gonna stick that in place on our mold and now we've just created a sanding block that we can use to sand our spreader block to the exact same shape. I'll just put some pencil marks on there, then I'll know when the pencil marks are gone. We've sanded the entire surface matching the mold. I don't think I've ever sanded so much MDF on any project. Thankfully we only have to make this one time, if we do it right the first time. There we go. There's just the tiniest trace of pencil mark. I can tell I've already started to remove some material there. I think we're going to call that good. That makes one of our spreader blocks but we're not done yet. One block alone doesn't do us a whole lot of good, so we also need one that goes here, here, and here. I made these other blocks using the exact same process as the first, getting it rough shaped, then using the sticky back sandpaper to fine tune the fit to get them to fit exactly to the shape of the mold. Now we need to connect them. To do that, I'm gonna use some turnbuckles that you can get at the hardware store. They're pretty inexpensive and they come in all kinds of different sizes. I've seen some different methods for attaching these. I'm gonna try something that I don't think I've seen. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but we're gonna try it out because, well, that's how we learn things around here. Probably the most popular way that I've seen for connecting these to your spreader blocks is by cutting this loop off there, drilling a hole, in the center and just epoxying the end of the turnbuckle in there. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I wanna create a small mortise in the center so that this loop can slide in there and then I wanna secure it with a bolt down through the center. Now, since I've never done this before, I don't really know if that's a good idea or not. It is gonna allow the turnbuckle to flow in there if it has a bolt kind of as a center pivot. In my head, I could see that being useful, but I don't really know if that's a good idea or not. I want to know from you guys down below in the comments if you've done this before, is that a good idea that your block can float or is it a bad idea? Let me know down there if it's good or bad and why that is. If it turns out that this is a hindrance allowing this to float, it'll be easy to fix. I'd be able to just simply epoxy the whole entire thing in there making it one solid block. It's going to be easy to repair if I need to, but let's see what happens. To make my mortise, I'll first drill a series of small holes in the center of my spreader block. Then I'll use a chisel to clean up the rounded edges left by my drill bit until the turnbuckle fits in there smoothly.
Now I'll just snug these bolts down. We should be good to go. There we go. The last thing that I'm gonna do is apply a piece of leather to the ends to protect the wood. A lot of people use cork as well, but I've got a lot of leather. I don't have any cork, so we're gonna try the leather. Now you guys have seen me glue leather on things before, so I'm gonna spare you the details of that, but I am gonna do that. Really, this thing's ready to be put to work. Let me just show you a very high level example of how this thing's gonna work. So use your imagination just a little bit, and let's imagine that there are bent sides already installed in this mold, and we're ready to clamp it in there to start doing other work. We'll be able to take our spreader and using the turnbuckle, tighten that in there, which will hold the sides tight against the mold. The same thing goes for down here. And once we have everything clamped in place, that's gonna hold the sides of the guitar perfectly against the mold while we do other operations like gluing the kerfing, gluing in the tail block, and other things like that. There it is, guys. The mold for the first Haley Guitars acoustic guitar build. We're well on our way now. We can't do any of the work until this is complete, and now that this is complete, I have no excuses. Hope you guys found it interesting. Again, let me know in the comments your thoughts on making these turnbuckles float. We're gonna find out if that's gonna work well or not. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. That's a wrap. And there's one sheet of templates that's out of here. This is why we make multiple copies, because I'm going to be slicing them up all throughout the process. And of course, today, do you think we have a small glue bottle to put this stuff in? No. So we're working with a gallon, and hopefully I don't spill it everywhere. I've cut just a small hole on the top, so hopefully I can ooze out just a small bit and it doesn't just spill all over, but we'll see how that works. Easy there, speed demon.